<laughs> so you remember how you love to take things apart as a kid? As a kid, there were no bounds for me when it came to learning how something worked. I remember playing with MS-DOS on my dad's computer and typing in a command, Deltree was it? I'm pretty sure my dad took his computer to the repair shop like 10 or 15 times because of what I would do to it. But I was learning. Babies learn by touching things, and as kids, we learn by exploring. As adolescents and adults working with software, this is the exact same thing. Now, when it comes to software in my arsenal, Photoshop is really the one that comes to mind. And when you think of a program as old as Photoshop and the hundreds of people that have worked on it over the years, there are inherently things that you're not gonna know about it. I mean, Photoshop has settings for all the things. They have color settings, keyboard settings, menu settings, 3D settings. Why is there 3D in Photoshop? And what is this? about Photoshop supporting video in CS6? <sighs> anyway, a few years ago, some good friends of mine and I started a series of workshops called Sidebar Workshops. I took care of the Photoshop section, which was more of a tips and tricks session than a how to use Photoshop session. So with that in mind, I'm gonna go over a few of the ways that I customize Photoshop in order to make my life easier, and hopefully in turn, it'll make your life easier. Now the first panel I always configure when I get into a new installation of Photoshop is the layer panel. And in this panel, there are two specific options that can be game changers depending on how you use Photoshop on a daily basis. The first one is more of a cure to an annoyance, which is expand new effects. It pretty much does what it says. Whenever you add effects to a layer, Photoshop usually shows you a list of the layer effects that you have just added. If you commonly work with Photoshop documents with a lot of layers in them, you're going to want this off. That way you save some precious real estate. Speaking of annoyances, the option at the very bottom of the panel solves a problem that I've had for years. Unfortunately, it only took until CS4 for Adobe to actually add this, and the fact that they hadn't added it until CS4 is insane. This is such a pet peeve of mine. It's like, oh, I just like want to rip my hair out every time. If you've worked with this option on, I don't understand how you can work with this option on, because if you copy layers, you're probably going to see copy, copy one, copy two, copy three, three, copy four, and so on. And if you're like me and you name your layers and you try to copy those in order to reuse them, you then have to re-edit the names of those layers in order to get everything nice and tidy. It's just completely maddening. Turning this option off is the first thing I do whenever I get a new copy of Photoshop. It has saved my sanity on so many occasions. That's it for the layer panel. Let's move on. Now the history panel is a panel that I hadn't worked with in the past, because the history panel is so simple that you wouldn't actually think it would have any options, right? Well, that's wrong apparently. As the story goes, we have person A who's working on a website that they want to slice. Said person then flattens all the layers and saves the document, but they don't undo before they close out. So what happens? Well, all the layers are now destroyed. So this first option, which is take a snapshot on save, does exactly what it says. Every time you save, it'll take a snapshot of your layer set. So you'll never have to run into that problem ever again. So it figures that talking about panels in Photoshop, or I guess anything Photoshop, can get tiring pretty quickly. But I have one final note for one special panel. That panel is the Layer Styles panel. My one note for the Layer Styles panel is really for those who are newer to Photoshop. The defaults are horrible. Whether it's layer styles or filters, Photoshop gives you horrible defaults. Now you might be asking yourself, why would the creators of Photoshop do this? Because the answer is they want you to change them. Unfortunately, that's given us hundreds of images with unrealistic drop shadows, with three pixel strokes, and other effects that are just completely odd. It is so ubiquitous that the Wikipedia page for a drop shadow is the default Photoshop drop shadow. Ah. Now to those of you who are newer out there, I implore you to play with every knob, every setting, every text box, because it's important not only to learn what Photoshop gives you, but it's also important to realize how you can hack it. Now here's what I want you to take away. Photoshop is a gigantic program with hundreds of ways to customize it. It can get pretty daunting at times. I've only covered three or four options, but I encourage you to play with the options that you stumble upon in order to improve your workflow. On a broader note, get to know your tools. Doing so will not only allow the tools to step out of your way, it'll also become an extension of you. So keep playing, keep tinkering, and keep breaking things. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you next time.